after I had finished India, I found that the same method of operation could be applicable abroad because uh, I remember the next uh, clinic movement after outside. Uh, I realized the first, uh, I realized the way I had functioned in India, exactly the same method could function abroad because we had a student from Dubai who came in and she said, I want to open in Dubai. I said, fine, you study, go back and I'll come and I did the same thing. I flew in, had a press conference, met the ladies the area and uh, spoke the media and the television and uh, gave free consultation and was back in Delhi the same night. Then uh, two Middle Eastern countries, I did Dubai and Abu Dhabi, another one and came back. Then I did uh, Kuwait, then uh, uh, Oman came back. I found that very, very mm, effective. And what happens really is after this press conference and media meets, what happens is that two months later, magazines and television programs and uh, various papers go on coming out with different papers at different timings. So very often you cover almost uh, four or five or six months of constant publicity of my work. I found that very effective. Then there was this uh, foray for the first time into the Western market when Selfridges in London had uh, the Festival of India. It was the Sea India exhibition in which uh, uh, I was not planning to participate at all. But I went to see Ms. Gandhi some work and she said that uh, what's happening about the Festival of India. And I said that yes, they're having a festival there. And she said, why don't you participate? I said, it's too late now. And uh, I said, when the Western world is may not be interested in Ayurveda, then they're not so schooled on the thought on uh, India and our Ayurvedic heritage. So to go there and sell at this point doesn't seem to be much use. So she said, it doesn't matter if you don't sell, go and educate the Western world on India. If you just educate them and come back with the education program, that would be worthwhile. And I said, fine, I'll just go and speak the way I've been speaking all over the world. She said, go and do the same thing in London. Why not? I said, fine. So we got uh, through Mr. Gandhi initially a place in the festival, which was a Sea India exhibition. They removed a very heavy jewelry counter put in Shanar. And, uh, uh, what I did was about uh, two months earlier, I'd informed them I was coming myself and they said you come immediately, we'd want to cover before you open. What is very lovely for the Western media is that when there's a festival in India, anywhere in the world, they start having programs and informing the people what's coming before you actually arrive. By you, I mean any other commodity from India. So I thought that was very good because I came on a series of programs on BBC and various uh, channels in the UK. And then the Indian High Commission had a huge press conference for me that Shanas Herbal launches Ayurveda in the West and whatever, and a very heavily attended press conference at the Indian High Commission. I think that was the most successful that I've ever had because uh, there was must be a couple, of, um, of, uh, dozen media, must be 50, 60, 70 with the mm, very heavy electronic media and uh, press and daily papers and magazines. And they, they had sent out uh, information to all the feature editors, beauty editors, health editors, fitness editors. The High Commission done an excellent job. And because they were totally into a sort of a frenzy for the Festival of India in London, the whole uh, country was involved with knowing about India. So uh, that was very, very ideal for me, I think, the start. So actually, when I opened in the Festival of India for the first time, Ayurveda, I already uh, various channels had, you know, uh, come out with programs like Meet the Herbal Legend and Shanao Sen Live and Nature at its Best India, this ancient herbal civilization being promoted by Shanao Sen, whatever. So, you know, I developed this identity with Ayurveda in India. And uh, it was interesting that when uh, uh, they opened the exhibition, we had such a massive uh, response from the public that next day the Daily Telegraph headlined Herbal Hell Breaks Loose at Selfridges. They had to call in the security, there were queues of people wanting to buy Ayurveda. In fact, Mrs. Gandhi came in for the inauguration four days later, we had sold out. And she said, what, you didn't start? I said, no, I've sold out. She said, oh, that's very good. Then, you know, we did so well at that festival that they flew in um, almost um, six consignments in five weeks, flying out a consignment every five days. We just couldn't have enough to sell. It was such an instant success. India and Ayurveda. You see, I explained to the Western world, I said that uh, uh, you must understand that when the word uh, strawberry or papaya or arm is written on a product, it's, if it's synthetically created. 
when Mrs. You know, I was thinking that Japanese might go away. <laughs> anyway, when Mrs. Gandhi came to the counter uh, for the inauguration four days later, she said, uh, when Mrs. Gandhi came for the inauguration f uh, four days later, we sold out. And there I was standing in front of an empty counter. And she said, what? You, d you didn't bring your products. I said, we've sold out. And she said, well done, very good. And you know, we did so well that uh, we flew in uh, uh, six consignments in five weeks, flying out a consignment every five days. We couldn't just uh, uh, keep or buy enough from India to keep the clients going. There's such a massive response to India and Ayurveda. And I realized finally that India had arrived. In fact, Selfridges uh, finished a six-week festival and they were so keen on the product that they said that we cannot even give a single day's gap between upstairs and downstairs being a consumer product and a treatment line. So they put us into the most exclusive French perfumery. For India to be in a French perfumery selling Ayurveda was something very unusual 30 years ago, 25 years ago. And uh, no, for India to be in the French perfumery Selfridges in uh, like 1982, was something very, very unusual because we were selling in the French perfumery in uh, Selfridges uh, a civilization, a heritage, and a product which was totally unknown to the Western world. But it had taken on in such a violent way because I stood in front of them at the press conference and said that if you use strawberry or almond or um, papaya or any product in the cosmetic, and it says uh, synthetic created, the God-given power of that product is not there or that ingredient. So you are actually using chemical and not natural. And I said it's not fair to cash on clientele gullibility and say that uh, you're using uh, a herb by mentioning a herb and not using it. Uh, in fact, I said that um, the word uh, natural should only be used when you're using the real ingredient. Otherwise, it should not be used at all because it is confusing the client by giving the impression it is herbal when it's not. And uh, I think the Western world did understand because it gave them certain examples of how chemicals would harm them and how for centuries India had had this ancient civilization and how we had lived through the most uh, difficult problems uh, medically with the help only of plant power. I explained to them that what I am offering to you to the Western world is being tested by the most rigorous method of all, the test of time, 5,000 years. And that the Western world took on in a very, very beautiful form. I said that whatever you use on the skin is absorbed by the human body. So whatever you use on the skin by way of a cosmetic becomes part of the bloodstream and part and parcel of the body. And whatever becomes part of the bloodstream is absorbed naturally. So you must be very, very careful what you use the skin. And you are actually spending money to buy chemical cosmetics to hurt yourself. So if you want to remain beautiful forever or as long as possible and remain looking lovely, you can do exactly what we have been doing for centuries, maintaining youth and beauty with the help of plants minus side effects that the Western world is having now. I explained to them that uh, uh, nature at no stage could ever harm, like I couldn't imagine a burn with sandalwood or almond or rose or date extract or flower extracts, but there could be a chemical burn. And that actually uh, got into their minds. I remember uh, a press person stood up at the press conference in London and said that, I think that uh, this uh, mania that you've aroused in the Western world of uh, Ayurveda and herbs is a fad in fashion. It's going to pass away like anything else. Like everything comes like a craze and pass off, and so will Ayurveda. I said, uh, as far as I am concerned, uh, you got hurt, you got burnt, you hurt yourself, and you're coming back to us, India, where we have been for several centuries. India stand never moved with Ayurveda. So she said, what happens if we now reject you? As if you now reject us, you'll go back to what you yourself have rejected. You have no way to go back. To, you must come back to India, to nature, and to Ayurveda. They said that you seem to have a massive superiority complex for India. I said, I have no complex. In herbs, we are, by the proof and test of time, superior. There's no compromise there. 
I again feel that like if America sold herbs and France sold herbs and UK sir sold herbs and any other part of the world sold herbs, the automatic thought the word Ayurveda and herbs would be first India. It would be uh, Ayurveda, yoga, meditation and in India. I think that was very good because once uh, this Festival of India was launched and herbs took off in Selfridges, then we, we went into Harrods with their festival, the Fabulous Orient. Then Gallery de Fayat in France had a festival. We entered the French totally unexplored domain of beauty by way of Ayurveda because uh, uh, somehow for centuries uh, France has been known almost as the home of beauty. To enter there with an Ayurvedic product was not easy. But I found the French ladies unusual in the sense that uh, uh, they are very mark oriented. But when it comes to beauty and uh, personal care, they tend to prefer a natural alternative. And if you stand in, uh, on a counter and explain or at a press conference to the client or the press that uh, giving the reasons that this is good for the client or this is bad, and these are the dangers that we will save you from by using this product. And this is the kind of history we have behind us. By way of so many centuries of trial, they are definitely uh, inclined to try it once. And once they try Ayurveda and the effects, which are almost miraculous, then for them to go back to chemicals is a difficult job. But first, you must uh, explain to them that they are spending money to hurt themselves because chemicals definitely have very serious side effects.